So my, my presentation will be a little bit different than the ones that we just saw, the very inspirational ones, but I hope you walk out of here with some very interesting thoughts. Most of us in this room have spent our whole lives with access to light. We walk into rooms like this that are well lit, we walk into our offices, we walk into our bedrooms, and we can push the light switch and we have access to light. Not everyone on this planet is as fortunate as we are, and in the next 15 minutes, what I'd like to do is go over how lighting is going through this transformation in the world. Not only how it will affect our lives, but the lives of many of the le less fortunate people on this planet. So in any discussion on light, we have to start with Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was the father of the light bulb. He invented the light bulb in 1879, and in many cases, people would say that it is probably the single most important invention of the 19th century. It really changed our lives. It allowed us to work at night. It allowed us to work in a healthy environment, to be much more productive. And it really was one of the, the major breakthroughs uh, in that century. But it also took 50 years for that breakthrough to really affect our lives. Um, in, the, in the 1900s, early 1900s, there were very few buildings that actually had power to them. Um, for the next 50 years, we had to build power plants, we had to electrify our homes, we had to buy light bulbs, we had to make it possible to actually have light. So it took quite a long time. Now, I'm going to go through sort of a trans, sort of a evolution of the, the electronics industry and where lighting has gone and where it's going to go. This is a vacuum tube. Many of you may recognize it, may have, many of you may have no idea what it is, but it was really the beginning of the electronics industry. It was an electronic switch, it was a bulb with a electronics inside it. Forty years later, the transistor became possible. Uh, it is smaller, lighter, cheaper, faster, more reliable, and that was really the founding of the modern electronics world. That's the transition between the bulb industry and the solid state industry. Now, the next transition occurred with cathode ray tubes, televisions. Many of you may never have seen a television like that. I remember carrying them, and they weighed 100 pounds and breaking my back with them 25 years ago. But now we all have liquid crystal displays with LED backlighting, solid state technology, much better. Electronics. You know, I sat throughout this presentation, and we have displays like this. Everybody's got cell phones in their hands. Um, displays are something we take for granted. All the technology that we have is only possible because of solid state electronics. We wear electronics. Even though our cars may not actually be electric cars yet, all of the electronics that's in them make them possible. So in other words, we could not have even our cars driving without electronics. The light bulb, if you notice, many of us, even up here, I notice these are standard incandescent bulbs. We still use these. They're one of the last holdouts of this 150-year-ago invention of the light bulb. It's a, basically a gas-filled tube that is not very efficient. It produces about 12 lumens of light per watt. So we're burning a lot of watts in here right now to get the light that we need. And it also doesn't last long. It is inexpensive because we've been making it for so long, but otherwise it's not necessarily an inexpensive device if it, weren't, if it were made 150 years ago. And now we did for a short period, and, and some of these actually are CFLs. I noticed that up here. They do produce more lumens per watt. They're about 60 lumens per watt, so it's better. But it's still a gas-filled tube. There's still electronics in it that burns out. Along comes the LED. In 1991, the blue LED was invented by Dr. Seiji Nakamura in Japan. It is a three-volt device, very low voltage. The best LEDs in the world produce about 150 lumens per watt, so roughly 12 times that of the conventional incandescent bulb that, in this case, you know, we're still using up here. The way that blue, white light actually is used or made out of a blue LED is they put a yellow phosphor over it. So in this video, the picture that you see behind me actually has a yellow phosphor coating 
over the blue LED and it causes the light to be a broader spectrum, which causes us or allows us to have white light. The problem with an LED light bulb as we know it today, when you go into a Home Depot and buy one, it still looks like a regular bulb. And the reason that they're made that way is the fact that they have to be run on 120 volt AC. But yet, a, a DC LED is three volts, so it's not very practical to run it. So what they have to do is they have to put a power supply inside the LED to convert that 120 volts AC into, 12 vol er, into a three volt DC device. And that electrolytic capacitor that is on that power supply has a life of three to 5,000 hours. Yet when most of us read the label on the top of the box, it'll say LED will last 35,000 hours. There's a disparity there. So unfortunately, when we go buy those bulbs, they're not gonna last as long as they're saying they will, but you will have forgotten where you bought it and you want a new one and all that, so don't worry about it. It's still the right thing to do because that same light bulb, which you, know, you needed 60 watts for in the conventional one, only needs about seven or eight watts. So it's still the right thing to do. Having said that, what is the answer? The answer ultimately is low voltage lighting. How do we light our lights in our buildings using low voltage? And there's gonna be a transition that will occur. And what you see here is a little light source. And this is where I'm gonna ask my, my volunteer to come up. This is the same thing that you see on the screen. This is just an example of a low voltage light source. It's 24 volts across here, it's safe. Don't worry about touching it. See those little light sources there? Take those and put them on. That's a 60 watt light bulb. It's using nine watts. And this is a horticultural light. It uses, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but this is using blue and red light that make plant absolutely go crazy. So was that easy to do? Yep. Was it fun? Yep. Sort of. <laughs> so so that's, that's the future of lighting, not buying bulbs that look like um, you know, standard incandescence, but this is the future of lighting. You'll be able to do a lot of unique things and cool things in your house eventually. So having said that, let's move on just a little further. This is an example of a technology center in Bangalore, India, that we just finished uh, installing the low voltage lighting in. Not only has the feedback been extremely positive, that the quality of the light is incredible, but at the same time, it was the easiest installation that the installers said that they'd have ever done. They were able to do low voltage, completely safe. They could put the lights wherever they want. They loved playing with them. I mean, it was almost incredible to watch, uh, watch the installation go up. This is a, a little video of a desk lamp that uses this exact same light source. So you can imagine now, depending on your mood, you may be able to walk in and put a different color temperature in different beam angle, different colors. I, I actually have grown lettuce under this lamp by using the grow light. Or you could put these under your cabinets in your kitchen and grow your lettuce or your herbs in one day and the next day you, you know, use them for something else. So the ability to do things very unique with lighting is gonna be enabled by low voltage lighting. This is an example of power over ethernet lighting. You're gonna ask where is low voltage gonna come from? The ethernet cable plugged into your cell telephone or phone on your desk as well as your computer is very much like this cable that he's plugging in right now. We're gonna be able to put sensors into the phone. We're gonna be able to control it with our iPhone apps. We're gonna be able to set profiles. Because low voltage lighting um, is 48 volts in this case, it runs without an external power supply. So those electrolytic capacitors that we talked about are gone. So there's nothing to burn out and the lights truly will last 35, 40,000 hours, or in many cases, you know, most of our lives. So you saw some lights flashing earlier, sensors um, that are like daylight harvesting, occupancy, air quality, can it be all, all integrated into the uh, light system? The red light that was flashing guides you out of the building during fires, and the blue lights that guide you into a safe room in case of a police emergency. Horticultural, the horticultural industry is also going through a massive revolution. This is an, a picture of the same light that you saw light up here. It has two different wavelengths, 660 nanometer red 
and 450 nanometer blue. Those are the wavelengths that plants absorb most efficiently. You've probably heard of the fact that California is in a massive drought. We grow much of our food in the winters in California. Well, when water is gone, we're going to have to figure out a better way to do that. You can grow food with one-tenth of the water using indoor horticultural vertical gardens than you can in outside um, gardening or outside you know, large, for, uh, large growing systems. You also use roughly one-fifth of the energy that you do with conventional lights. This is an example of a little video that we did using what's called wireless power. This is a light source very much like this one, but it's got a wireless power source in it that allows you to actually pick it up and move it, and now you can put light anywhere. It's not something that's commercially available yet, but can you imagine that you can just take light and put it on the, on the wall, on the ceiling, anywhere you'd like? It really is an incredible enabling technology. Now, so far we've talked about the things that will affect our lives. But solid state lighting has the potential impact to change many more lives on it, you know, regarding how it, people live than just our lives. This is an example or a picture of two women that are standing in front of a light source similar to what they have all the time, basically a kerosene lamp. This is the first time they were shown an LED or a solid state light source. You can see their reaction. It's incredible. There's a company in Illinois called Watts of Love that we've worked with very closely, and they've developed some light sources. One is the one in front is for doctors and midwives. The ones in the back are for people who basically do not have any access to electricity. They're giving these lights to people, and their lives completely change. They're able to charge them with a solar panel during the day, and then they can recharge their cell phones. You know, just like all of us, cell phones are becoming common there, but they can't recharge them using the grid system because they don't have access to the grid. So this allows them to, to basically be more productive, stay in contact, but allows them to work at night. And here's a statistic from the World Bank that I think you will realize how important this is when you really, really think about it. Light is the fastest way out of poverty. If you don't have light, not only are you spending a good portion of your income on kerosene, you're also not productive at night. You're not able to study at night. You're not able to work at night. Many of the things that we take for granted here, being able to come into rooms like this and they're well lit, you know, they just they can't even picture. So light is the first step in able, enabling them to get out of poverty. It also is healthier. Just the same things that Thomas Edison enabled us to do 140 years ago, we're enabling with solid state lighting. Because the light sources are extremely efficient, and because they're low voltage and they can be recharged with solar energy, they have now access to light, which wasn't possible before. We're standing here in the middle of a university, and my guess is that many of you probably don't even start studying until 9 or 10 at night. I know that was the case for me. And again, if you didn't have light, you wouldn't be able to study. Or you would be doing it under a candle, and it would be much harder to do. So you can imagine that children who are in parts of the world that do not have access to light, their ability to study and learn and get themselves out of poverty dramatically improves. So here's a statistic that I'd like for you to remember. There's 1.2 billion people on this planet without any access to any electricity. That's not speaking about the ones that have access to electricity part of the time. And by solid state lighting, the transition that's occurring on this planet right now, we will allow them to basically come out of poverty. And another statistic that's very important to remember is that in the next 50 years, solid state lighting will improve the quality of life of more people than Thomas Edison's invention did in the 50 years after his invention. And the other challenge that I have for you is tonight, believe it or not, just by coincidence, is Earth Hour. So tonight at 8.30, I encourage you to turn off all of your electronics for one hour and just feel what it would be like. I think it may appreciate not only lighting, but the, the things that we have, you know, 
benefiting our lives. Thank you.